Hey everyone, uh, my name is Eric Morrison and this is my Different World project. So we are going to interview Gloria Davis. She is my downstairs neighbor. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to go down there and talk to her. She's retired, so obviously she has a very different lifestyle, a very different, a different world really than what we experience on a daily basis. So we're going to go downstairs and talk to her, get to know her a little bit, and maybe see uh, sort of the differences we have with her um, and maybe some similarities even. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And so here we go. Yes, yes, um, yes. yes. <clears throat> I'm Gloria Davis, and uh, I live on the first floor. Uh, I love retailing. And I've been in the retail uh, home furnishings industry at the first boutique in the city of Tampa in 1963. You have to kind of go with the flow. And I decided that my business wasn't um, able to support, you know, the kind of, of things that I needed. Company name Mangorians. And I had no idea what that meant because it sounds like a Chinese company and they advertise for salespeople, uh, home furnishings, which I've always loved. I began to design custom art and frame, which is one of my favorite things to do. Wasn't sure exactly where, I, what direction I was going, but you know, a door always opens another door. Would you like to join Bernine's? And I said, oh, I'm so excited. An old friend who was managing the Drexel Heritage Store, because I love high-end furniture, that's what I love and I, what I come from. Because I had some wonderful clients who kept saying to me, you know, you should really be on your own. Uh, we, we, we feel they're holding you back. Uh, I didn't have as much freedom, you know, as you do when you're in your own business. So uh, my husband said to me this, he said, honey, I'm going to empty the garage. I had a studio, and it was only by appointment, 86 to 92, until we had another recession. So we drove down to Naples, and we met this young man who had a perfect store for me. I had a wonderful experience at, uh, uh, it was called Norris. When my husband passed away, I decided that the, the Naples pace was really heavy. I was working 8.30 to 6, six days a week. So I came up here to St. Augustine, a boutique in the Leitner Museum. She said, you're hired. So I went and it was kind of like, oh my, working um, for Ward. I worked for him for five years and we are, I'm still a Wardette. We're still friends and um, I'm crazy about him. The ad for Kennedy Studios. This is this was '99, and that's who I am. I take a ride. How has your daily life changed since you decided oh, to retire? Well, life really, really changed from being very scheduled to non-scheduled. And so I said, "Oh, Gloria, a perfect time to do the eye cataracts removal." so that I could see at night. And I took some time off for myself and I didn't like it. I'm just an insatiable um, shop person. So I saw eclectic galleries on the Bayfront, October to February of that, of that 07. I retired again. Retirement is a name, a word that I really don't like. I call it my black days, and not not heavy depression, but just this restless spirit. What has helped me a lot is PBS for music. Um, I'm very fond of movies. I've been going to the movies since I was a very little girl. Avid uh, theater enthusiast. I had books full of my favorite stars' autographs. And unfortunately, I didn't. I left them home, and my mother threw them all away, and I'm oh, no. devastated oh. because I had personal autograph book with Arthur Fiedler and Boris Karloff and Lucille Ball and all the people I met. So, how do you think that your daily life, like day to day, how do you think that differs from a college student? You have a schedule, and you have more demands 
I have fewer demands than I've ever had in my life. This is the year that I decided to come out of the cave because I went through a period of some months where I watched movies. I watched much too much television, except that I do like, as I said, educational channels. And I love Oprah. The college student uh, seems to be more savvy, perhaps. We were very uh, innocent. And I would think that today's world, because of computer, because of the internet, because, but then again, they have to be more cautious. I think that they have so much more uh, available to them than we did, if they use it wisely. Very uh, uh, driven uh, advertising world. We were just beginning to have this exposure to product. I grew up at 37. And that doesn't mean that I wasn't uh, capable. It just meant that I hadn't had the same kind of uh, exposure to the world, perhaps. Uh, when I was in college, I fell in love. We focused on the, the, what we did in the, in the 50s after the war. I had a, a, an engagement ring and a plan to get married and, and I was planning a wedding and, and I wasn't thinking about anything but of becoming a bride and moving into New York City. I felt very uh, sophisticated in my own self. However, I really wasn't. I just thought I was. And as far as the college student today, I don't like the way they dress. I think it's too naked. And the most atrocious get-ups, I used to walk down the street here to your library, and I thought that some of it was much too risque. And I thought that the school should have a dress code. We wore skirts and stockings and, you know, we looked like professional students, not what we see on the street. You don't build self-esteem if you don't like the way you look and you don't take pride in your appearance. So, do you ever feel like stereotyped or walking around town? Like, are there any misconceptions you think people might think of you? I think that they think that if you reach 70, you're already in a box, and that you've lost your ability to think. I'm Zold's Mickey Mouse, so age discrimination. They need to take us more seriously. The misconception of retirement turned over a new leaf this uh, year. I went over to the Council on Aging, and I volunteered. And then my latest is this literacy. I'm going to teach people to read. Uh, the dumb, not the dumb school, the deaf and, and blind school said they don't have it because I was interested in maybe helping them. The focus now, I think, is going to be learn to read. You can tell room full of college students, one thing, like some word of advice, or what would be your message? Think for yourself, uh, be, be informed, uh, do a lot of reading, um, uh, get out and try uh, and find out what you really love and love what you do. I think a junior year abroad, uh, perhaps I didn't have that opportunity, but living in another country or another situation, then you appreciate how wonderful this country is. If you have confidence and you have some ability, and you want, and you have ambition. I mean, people who just want to sit and watch football, excuse me, or baseball, and don't want to do anything to to in, encourage their minds. You have the other extreme. You have the workaholic who doesn't find time for himself. It's a happy medium that you have to reach. We find out what our strengths and weaknesses are. And if you go to a job and you're not happy, you just you know do your very best. Go on and find something else. An attitude, enthusiasm for me, you know, you just gotta do what, you, what makes you happy. And you don't know always until you go and you say, well, you know, I, I tried that. Talk to people. Talk to people wherever you go. And as we get older, we get bolder. We get more confident, uh, we should, uh, and we get more uh, interesting, I think. 
So th these are these are the things that I have learned. Um, oh, I don't have all the answers, my goodness. And I learn every day. It's the brain has got to have food, and I really uh, have a thing about uh, alcohol. I think, you you know, you have a glass of wine, that's fine, but if you're going to burn your brains with beers and stuff, then you, you're, you're killing yourself. The point is, be concerned about what you put in your body, because it's very nice to hear when I go to the doctor that I could take 20 years off of my life. You know, have a drink, but you don't have to get drunk drunk. I mean, that is, it's not good. Those are all my questions. Are those all your questions? Yeah. So did you get answers? Absolutely. You? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I think it's great. I'm so blessed to have you all upstairs. Oh, well, really. we like having you too. Yeah, do you? Yeah. yeah.